Welcome to Robert Kiyosaki's The Business of the 21st Century. Robert Kiyosaki is recognized internationally as one of today's leading financial experts. The author of the best-selling Rich Dad, Poor Dad, his books have been translated into 51 languages in 109 countries and sold more than 28 million copies worldwide. Robert has spent his life educating people on how to attain financial freedom. Now, through this special video presentation, he explains why network marketing is indeed the business of the 21st century and how you can take advantage of its opportunities to create the life you desire. Hello, I'm Robert Kiyosaki. I'm the author of this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I want to welcome you to the business of the 21st century. For those of you who may not be familiar with this book, uh, it was published in 1997, it was a self-published book, and it went all around the world, and in 2000 it made the New York Times bestseller list. It was the only self-published book that made it. And at the same time, a woman named Oprah Winfrey called, and I went on her show to talk about Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and voila, suddenly I was a famous individual. So today this book has now sold approximately 25 million copies in 100 different countries and 50 different languages. So today, Rich Dad, Poor Dad is the number one personal finance book ever written. So Rich Dad, Poor Dad is a very simple story of my two dads. My real dad was the head of education for the state of Hawaii. Great guy, PhD, like I said, head of education, smart guy, but he also ran for lieutenant governor of the state of Hawaii as a Republican. Unfortunately, he lost and he ultimately died poor. So that's why I call him my poor dad. My rich dad, on the other hand, didn't finish school, but he ultimately became one of the richest men in Hawaii. So he was my best friend's father, and starting when I was just the age of nine, my rich dad began teaching me about money and business, and why the rich are getting richer, and why there's this big gap between the rich and everybody else today. So rich dad is a very simple, true story about two fathers, rich dad and poor dad, tell their two sons about money. And it was my poor dad always said, go to school, get a job, work hard, and you know, all that stuff. And my rich dad says, you'll never get rich doing that. You'll never be a free man. So that's kind of the differences. But if I would show you, show you a diagram of the differences here, is that in financial education, this is very simply the difference. Because there's no financial education in our school, most people do not understand financial statements. So this here is income, expense, assets, and liabilities. And the reason my poor dad was poor, it was very simple. Because he couldn't read a financial statement because he don't have financial education in school. He was financially illiterate, although a PhD. And my poor dad always said, our house is an asset. And my rich dad said, your father may be well educated, but he can't tell assets from liabilities. So very simply, my rich dad said to me, assets, whether you work or not, put money in your pocket. So when a banker looks at your financial statement, the banker looks at this and says, oh, you have assets and you're putting money in your pocket. And if you look at your house, it's really a liability because every month it takes money from your pocket. Now, I can hear people say, well, it's, you know, I don't have any debt on it, but still every month you have insurance, you have upkeep and expenses to it. So very simply, the reason I'm a rich man today was I knew the difference between assets and liabilities. And I get richer and richer because every year I add more assets to my uh, balance sheet here. And so that's one of the biggest differences. And as my rich dad often said to me, he says, son, my banker has never asked me for my report card. My banker wants to see my financial statement because it's your financial statement that shows how high your financial IQ is. How smart are you with money? If you're very smart with money, the banker will give you as much money as you want because you know how to make money with money. If you're not very smart about money, all the bank will give you is a credit card and a home loan. So those are some of the differences between my rich dad and my poor dad. And if you stay tuned, you'll find out how you too can create assets instead of liabilities. Because if you're going to survive in the 21st century, you need more assets than liabilities. The next thing I want to cover with you is one of the most important lessons my rich dad gave me and it was called the cash flow quadrant. And what my rich dad explained to me is that there's four people in business. One is our, one are E's, employees. S stands for small business, self-employed or specialist. B stands for big business, and I stands for investor. 
And the thing of note here is that most people who go to school are programmed for the E and the S side. For example, it was my poor dad who always said to me, son, go to school so you can get a nice, safe, secure job. And so my poor dad wanted me to be an employee. And since the time I was a kid, get a safe, secure job, steady paycheck, and benefits. Okay? I didn't want to be an employee. And I said, Mama, and Mom and Dad, I want to be a rich man. And my, I fight with my dad. So my mother finally said, son, if you want to be rich, my mother was a registered nurse. And she said, if you want to be rich, the richest people I know are doctors. So my mom wanted me to come over here, be a specialist, a small business person. I said, there's only one problem with that, Mom. Doctors are really smart. And she says, you got a good point there. I'm not going to be a doctor. So I, you know, so I went to school. I have a Bachelor of Science degree. I can drive ships and I can fly planes. I flew for the Marine Corps. But that I've never used any of that education because I wanted to become a business owner. So it was my rich dad who basically said to me, you know, become a business owner and learn to be a professional investor. So one of the big differences here between these people is that it's called taxes. See, in 1943, in the U.S., the federal government passed a law that said employees had to pay tax before they got paid. So when you, go to your, when you get your paycheck from your employer, you open it up, and voila, the government's always taken a sizable chunk of it. And the harder you work and the more money you make, the more money they take from you. So that's why it's not that good to be an employee, because you can never get ahead, because the more you work, the more money you make, the greater they pay in taxes. Now, the, the doctors, the lawyers, and attorneys, you know, accountants were all laughing, saying, oh, these guys, they got, you know, they're getting paying a lot of taxes. So naturally, the federal government changed the laws again. So in 1986 in the U.S., a thing called the 86 Tax Reform Act, and it basically, basically took a lot of the benefits away from people who are self-employed, small business doctors and lawyers. So today in America, unfortunately, these guys pay the highest percentage in taxes. It is tragic. And a lot of people think they're investors, but what they're really doing is they're just giving their money to people like mutual funds, companies, and all that. So they're, not, they're investing, but they're not really investors. See, the big tax breaks are on this side. You know, the laws are pretty tight here, but this area is very, very great. So by being a business owner on, on the right-hand side of the quadrant, you can make a lot more money and pay a smaller percentage of taxes legally. And the key word is legally. In the investor quadrant, it is possible to make millions of dollars and pay 0% taxes legally. But you've got to know the difference. So one of the beauties of business for the 21st century, it allows people to make the transition from the E and the S side to the B side especially. And so you can become a big business owner. And the difference between an S and a B, small business and big business, is most of these guys can't quit working. Most small business owners, if they stop working for more than a month, the business collapses. You know, they don't really have a business. Most of these people own a job. So the beauty of business for the 21st century, it allows these people to make the transition to the B side so that you don't have to keep working hard for money, and the money can actually come in passively. Then once you have your business up and running, then I always recommend you then begin investing with your excess cash, paying less and less in taxes. And that's the reason the rich are getting richer. In this section, I want to talk to you about a different kind of quadrant. Years ago, I found out there were four kinds of people in the world. You know, one type are people who must be right. These people know all the right answers. They went to school. They know everything. You can't tell them anything. This is not a good business for them because their minds are too set. Another kind of person is a person who must be comfortable. You know, the house could be on fire, but they're still watching TV, what's, you know, eating a hot dog, watching what's going on in the world. These people are toast because the world economy is not coming back. The world economy has moved on. And people who need to be comfortable will probably be left behind. So the people who, might, who need to be comfortable, you probably shouldn't talk to them because you only make them uncomfortable. And they're probably not going to make the move because number one priority is being comfortable. Another kind of person is a person who must be liked. You know, they want to please everybody. 
this is probably not the business for them either, you know, because they want somebody else's approval. They want to be the good little boy or girl saying, I did the right thing, didn't I? You like me, don't you? And so they don't not, they'll probably not be successful in the 21st century because they'll probably want to be liked by people who have to be right and people want to be comfortable. All right, good, be comfortable. All right, you're very right. You know, that's probably being liked. But the business for the people of the 21st century are people who must win. And that's where I am at. One of the best things I was taught in the Marine Corps and at military school is not how many times you get knocked down, it's how many times you stand up. When somebody knocks you back, what do you do? Oh, 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 you hurt my feelings? You'll probably not be successful. The world will probably pass you by. Because as I said, the world economy is moved on. It's not coming back. So winners will win. But winning takes sacrifice. Success takes sacrifice. And these are the people who will do best in business of the 21st century. So when you're talking to people you know, about this business, you have to look at them and ask yourself, is this person really just going to be like, and they'll tell you what you want to hear? Or they're going to argue with you because they know all the right answers? Or they're going to, ar or they're going to get very upset with you for disturbing them? So what you're looking for in the network marketing business are people who want to win. People who know the economy has moved on. You'll find every race, gender, age, and background in network marketing. But what they really want to do is they want to win. It really is a true playing field in the world but not for these people. These people were left behind. Network marketing is for people who want to win because network marketing is the business model of the future. If you want the government to take care of you, then just keep doing what you want to do. It is possible for everyone to win, but the problem is you've got to commit to it. You've got to say, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to dedicate five years of my life. You want to look at the leaders and say, those are the people I want to be like. Those are the kinds of people I want to hang out with. That's what you got to say to yourself. And I want to help other people do what I want to do and win in life. And that's why I support network marketing, because it really is the business for the 21st century. As an entrepreneur, I have built many businesses from scratch. And as some of you know, a lot of them crashed also. Statistics show that most new businesses fail within the first five years, 90% in fact. And of the 10% that survive, the, the remaining 10% crash in the second five years. So in other words, most are gone in 10 years. So I've looked at many different models, and one that stands out for me is network marketing. And the reason for that, it takes very little upfront cash. It's low overhead. It, you can do it part-time. It means keep your daytime job, but do this part-time. And once the business is up and running, it can generate enough income so that you can move from the left side to the right side of the quadrant. So let me tell you about my introduction to network marketing because I had a very closed mind to it. Since I can build my own businesses, I said, why do I need a network marketing business? But about 15 years ago, I have a good friend, his name is Bill, and this guy is the best real estate investor I know. He has tons of assets in here. So I said, Bill, why did you start a network marketing business? And his, simple, his answer was very simple. He says, it's my way of helping people. But more importantly, he says, the reason most people can't invest in real estate is because they don't have a business. They don't make enough money simply because taxes, debt, inflation, and retirement savings are killing them. They cannot even invest. So my friend Bill, who is a professional real estate entrepreneur, he says, I started a network marketing business so the people that worked with me could start their own business and then invest money with him. So with that, I realized then that network marketing wasn't about making money, but it was about helping people to help other people make money so they become financially free. So the beauty of network marketing, I said, like it's very low entry point, doesn't take much money, you can do it part time. And where you profit is in most big corporations is they spend millions, sometimes billions of dollars in advertising. So rather than give that money to advertisers, network marketing depends on building a network it's called word of mouth, like you recommend a movie to a best friend. So really, the reason I support network marketing, because it's not about selling. It's about people helping people build assets in the asset columns, becoming business owners, and then becoming investors, rather than going through all of this here, which most E's and S's go through.